Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a feast of fat things, a feast of choice wines, of fat things full of marrow, of choice wines well refined. And he will destroy on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. In, In the, the Lord's, Lord's own house shall I dwell for length, length of days, days unending. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. In, In the, the Lord's, Lord's own house shall I dwell for length, length of days unending. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff, they give me comfort. In, in the, the Lord's, Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound in any and all circumstances. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and want. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. 
Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we might know what is the hope to which he has called us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Again, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops to destroy those murderers and burn their city. And he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the streets, and invite to the marriage feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. And so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, and few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The parable of the wedding feast is both a warning to us and an invitation. It's a warning against complacency, against assuming that just because we are churchgoers, that we are the ones chosen by God. The religious elite of the time of Jesus looked down on and condemned many people as not good enough. And it was those people, the tax collectors and prostitutes, who Jesus said were getting into the kingdom ahead of the Pharisees. The parable is an invitation to the religious elite of our day to examine their prejudices and judgments and so move beyond them to a place of welcoming those at the margins of our faith community. Like the servants of the king in the parable, we are being sent to the geographical margins of the world, to those places where the good news of Jesus Christ has not been preached. We are also being sent to the socioeconomic margins of our world, to the poor, to the sick and the imprisoned. We've been sent to the margins of our church, to revive the faith of the lukewarm and to welcome those who've not felt at home. The gay, the lesbian, the divorcee, the woman who's had an abortion. This parable 
is an invitation to those who are being, we are sent, being sent to. The unchurched of our neighborhood, the lukewarm Christian, those who felt unwelcome or rejected for any reason, the invitation is this. Come home. Come home to your father's house. In this house, all are welcome. The wedding feast that Jesus had in mind for his parable is that feast dreamed by Isaiah, that heavenly feast where all are welcomed. I think that our faith community, which here I speak as the part of Holy Trinity, has been experienced as a place of welcome. Here, young men and women struggling with sexuality can find welcome and support. People from many countries and cultures of Africa find a welcoming home. In our student cell groups at WITS and at UJ, we provide a safe space for people to share their stories, to be known and loved in their glorious uniqueness. We have an RCA program where we are able to welcome and journey with those who seek a closer relationship with Christ and his church. In many wonderful ways, we've grown as a community, but there's still challenges ahead of us. I think one of our challenges as church is becoming what our bishop calls a self-sustaining church. But being a self-sustaining church isn't just about putting hands into wallets. It's about moving from a feeling of obligation to support your community, to actually feeling that you own your community. Until we own in our own hearts and minds our church community, we'll always feel that we're doing the church a favor by sharing our resources with it. We will feel that we are doing it a favor by coming to Mass. We are unlikely to commit ourselves to service in various ministries or to taking part in programs that deepen our understanding of our faith. Bob Marley wrote a song called Redemption Song. It was about the African taken from his home and sold into slavery. A hundred years after the abolition of slavery, he sang, Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. His lyrics make the point that we can be trapped in certain ways of thinking. And to be truly free, we must be freed from our mental slavery as well. Our minds have been colonized by a Western consumerist mentality, which has convinced us that we come to church for entertainment, which we pay for. We've forgotten that we come to receive treasure from above that we've come to drink deeply of the waters of salvation. We've come to hear words of healing and forgiveness and to receive a mission from our Savior. We've come to be part of something infinitely greater than our small, petty selves. We've come to be part of the family of God. We have come home. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week. <laughs>